This is my face. This is my face. Track me. Track me. Ah, yes, yes. Back to the food. Thank you very much. It's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Eat good, live well, stay true. What is going on, you guys? Back with a long overdue, long awaited mukbang, a story time for the first time in a long time. And of course, my favorite, 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 favorite. We got Whoppers on deck, onion rings, poutine, going hammer, can't wait, super excited. I haven't had BK or poutine or Whopper in Lord knows how long. I'm thinking like three, four months. So I'm jacked. I got mono. I was hella sick. You guys know this, but I was craving for some reason. I was craving Burger King through the whole ordeal and I just have not got to it yet because, you know, I'm finally, finally coming around. Um, but yeah, so like two things to cover real quick uh, and then we'll get into this and the story. So first off, I just want to clear up some confusion. I started a new channel called Wingman ASMR. Uh, I just think that the wing videos are very popular. I say, fuck it, why not do a channel dedicated to wings? I love them, you love them, seem to be a thing. So that's a thing, that's a wing, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just winging it over there. <laughs> but really, uh, I am just, the whole thing is just ASMR, no talking, like I'm not gonna do stories and stuff, it's just the eating of the wings. Um, very up close and personal, a little savage. Um, as per how I do it uh, and then per video you guys basically choose the next flavor of wing the most popular flavor that gets voted on in the comments essentially wins and then the next video is going to be uh, that flavor so uh, hopefully I don't get sick of wings uh, if eating chicken wings is a sin and I'm gonna go to hell for it I'm gonna be burning for eternity because I'm about to eat way too many wings and over the course of the next while trying to build that channel but please if you like those wing ASMRs please go over to wingman uh, channel the link will be down in the description and uh, pinned as a comment in this video and you can click and go there please subscribe and get that thing going uh, that'll be great and I actually have some merch coming up for that immediately if, if anybody's down I think it looks pretty dope uh, honestly myself uh, and then the other thing is that um, just a quick clarity on this channel I am not quitting it I will still be doing black hoodie like it's gonna be you know summer's coming I got this new camera that's another thing I want to say is uh, this camera is pretty dope it does 4k this is just in 1080p right now but uh, I still have yet to experiment with the 4K, but the main reason I got it is because A, it's very small and handy, but it does this too. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, wait, what about up here? Under the chin? Looking nice. Right down to the food? Right down to the food? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. A little tilt. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to touch it. So, it's a little futuristic. I feel like I'm in Black Mirror, Black Hoodie and Black Mirror. Yeah, it feels dope though. So yeah, anyways, uh, yes, Black Hoodie channel is not going anywhere. It's just the main reason why is I have extenuating circumstances with my living situation and things like that to where I just don't get to do what I want to do really as much or ever anymore. So it's just like, I, it's like very tiptoey. I just need to like every once in a while I get a chance, but now the weather's getting better and I have this camera and stuff and I could probably go outside and go try some different places and sit on a picnic bench or a park and like, you know, eat with you in the grass sort of thing. So anyways, you know, stories and all this shit is still coming here. It's just, I'm in a weird place. Let's just say that, but let's eat cause I'm starving. No, don't do that. Okay. Let's unwrap a couple whoppers. Sir, much obliged. I do like how you know where I want to go. Okay. Two whoppers. Pawn the deck. And a poutine that we are going to crack open. And we are going to... According to Canadian standard, we're going to violate it, but 
Not in my world. Ketchup and poutine is a must. You guys all know this about me though. Nothing new on my side. So what's the story I'm gonna tell you? I'm gonna tell you about the first time I ever flew in a plane. And I know you're gonna say, oh, okay, that doesn't sound that crazy. But you know, I mean, for my first time, it was a little crazy. Uh, it wasn't uh, all, you know, rainbows and butterflies and, um, you know, WestJet Air Canada. It wasn't like a nice plane. It was a Cessna. It was tiny. It had like four seats. It was winter. So we'll just, you know, that's a thing. Scary, scary times. All right, on this one, we will be doing the removal of the raw onion and the addition of the fried onion. Cause that's a move up here, up in the great white north. I'm sure you guys do it in wherever you're from too, or at least you should. I got enough mayo. Let's just do a little more catch. Catch up. A two points. And that's good. A couple rings off to the side for me. And this one, we're just gonna leave it as is because I, oh wow. Hello, sir, please come back. This is my face. This is my face. Track me, track me. Ah, yes, yes. Back to the food, thank you very much. All right, so, first time flying, I was very old compared to most people for the first time I flew. A lot of people uh, get on those flights when they're quite young. I myself uh, lived, or well, was in a family that, you know, we weren't balling really, and I did, we didn't go on vacations like that. And anywhere we did go, we drove pretty much, uh, pretty much down to the states. We'd just drive to like Minnesota and places in the states, but I never flew like. for any sort of vacation. And so when I was, I'd like to say about 20, uh, I was working as a duct, duct cleaner, cleaning out air vents and shit. Uh, with my like, best friend and his dad owned the company or co-owned the company mm -hmm. sorry I just needed a little moment of silence for this because I've just been so excited for it Y'all know the game with BK. Too good. So. Doing duck cleaning with my buddy. Um, his dad comes to us one day, we did residential jobs, like mostly houses and stuff like that. So his dad comes up to us uh, one day and he's like, I got a job for you boys. But uh, you gotta fly to it. And it's out on a uh, native reserve, like up in Northern Canada, like over the thick forest of Canada into like fucking nowheresville. Absolutely nowhere. A A A. It's called Muskrat Down. Maybe there's a Canadian out there watching me who's heard of it. 
Anyways, this native reserve, what happened was is there like, I think the community has like a hundred people, 200 people, something like that. And they have like a, uh, like a community center there. But they had a fire in it and then all the um, ventilation, the air ducts and everything got filled with debris and contaminated and whatnot. So they needed a company to fly up and do the uh, duct cleaning on it. So who better than two young kids uh, to head up and, you know, live like a real man, learn some real life hard lessons, get paid. Well, we got paid like travel time and like, you know, time and a half and like double pay, like basically danger pay and shit like that. But at our rate that we were making, it still wasn't, we weren't even making what like a normal, like what a, you know, air conditioner installer guy or whatever, whatever he was making on like a normal day out in the field, just in, in the city. So I guess you have the right to refuse unsafe work, but I was like, whatever, I need money and I don't know, it'll be an adventure. Cool. But to my buddy, he's flown like a million times. But always like commercial. And so like, I, I agree to the job, but I'm like, yo, I've never flown before. And he's like, all right, well, that's crazy. And this time it's going to be very interesting because we're flying on like a Cessna. And it was like late winter, early spring. So it wasn't like quite over winter yet, but and then we're flying up north to like a remote community of just nothingness. So I was all confident and shit. Day came. We're going. We have to like, before we get on the plane, they open up the plane, they take out like a bunch of seats. We load in our gear. We have this metal box vacuum thing that looks like two or three times the size of like an R2-D2. Load that guy in. I think his name was Otis, we called him. Load Otis in. Uh, and then there's like four seats left, me and him, a pilot. So we're loaded up and we're going to Muskrat Dam in this tiny little aircraft I've never flown. Take off in the you know in the winter time and shit, flying over like boreal forest and over Ontario and then up in the north. The plane is just rickety, just swaying around like I feel like I'm on a tin can goose or something. The whole time I'm in there, I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I sign up for this? No stewardess with drinks, no in-flight snacks, no nothing. <laughs> and we couldn't even bring drinks or alcohol or anything because the reserve we were going to, Native Reserve, was a dry reserve. And uh, they have a problem with sobriety, you know, like 
people like to get fucked up because they live in a remote, remote area. Like whenever shit comes in, they just go hammer on it because it's like they never get booze and stuff. So <laughs> flying through, I feel like I'm in the movie The Edge. If you've ever seen The Edge, where they're like in the mountains and then so with Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin and shit. There's like the Bart the Bear and they and they end up crashing in a lake and um, they have to survive in the woods. I basically felt like I was in the movie The Edge. I thought we were going down. I thought we were going to die. Or I was going to have to survive in the woods or eat my best friend, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, this all goes well, but when we come in, we're rolling in. I look down. What are we going to... We're about to land. It, uh, we were landing on a dirt road with, that was like scraped off with a quad, like a four by four, uh, you know, four by four quad or whatever, like cleared out, but with that, and then the sides were like icy and snowy. So we land on this dirt strip <laughs> and then everything was good, landed good, everything was fine, like didn't die, that was dope. And then uh, unloaded and they like looked through everything. They were checking like our hoses to like check if we had like smoke because people smuggle alcohol in because it's worth so much money up there. So they like checked th thoroughly through all our equipment. To make sure we had no drugs and alcohol. Cause you can make a killing up there if you smuggle. And uh, yeah, so we got settled in and like, let me tell you guys, like I am not a, like a dude's dude. Like, and it was, a, it's a very, like that jaw was a very dude's dude. Like, you know, you're out in the wilderness. Native Reserve in Northern Canada, it's cold, like. Though me and my buddy have that job, we're not really the guys to be, you know, being guys. So we get put in this shack you know, this little shitty thing with two rooms and a kitchen. And we had to stay there for like a few days. But me and my buddy were really fast. Like we were really good at the job. Like we knew how to just get it done and like get it done efficiently. And then basically milk the rest of our hours to have to do not much. And, uh, So we basically did the job, got it done real quick. And they were all very like they're suspicious. They're like, did you even do the job? And we're like, yeah, like it's not, you go check it out. Like it's not as crazy as, uh, we didn't need to be here for three days or whatever it was. I think it was three days. So for the rest of the time, we were just trying to keep ourselves occupied. And we had this dude named Eugene. He was like our, he's like an elder, a native elder, like who, who like ran the village essentially. And when we talked to him, he like, he would just kind of like grunt at us. Like he didn't really say too much. We just kind of asked him a question. He'd like point and like nod and grunt. So we're like, all right. Anyways, Eugene's like a Bushman, like a real fucking dude living out there. And so, I remember one day we found like a fishing pole in like our, our, where we were staying. So we're like, oh, let's just go cast a line. So we go cast a line. I'm thinking we're not going to get shit. 
we land a fish immediately. Pretty big boy. <laughs> Buddy reels it in. And then <laughs> he's like, okay, like we didn't even want to keep it or eat it or anything. We just wanted to like catch it and really catch and release. And he's like, my buddy, like, he's such a pussy. Like, he's not an outdoor person at all. He's like, how do I get it off the hook? I'm like, well, you got to, like, go in and, like, tame it and, like, take the hook out and, like, get it. You put your finger in its mouth, basically. And she's like, I'm not fucking doing that. And I'm not gonna big myself up either. I wasn't down for either. Like, I don't fuck with fish. I don't go hunting. I'm not that guy. I'm not trying to reach my finger in like a pike's mouth and like get this thing out and whatnot. So we're just like sitting there trying to figure out how we're gonna like some tactic to like get it out of the, <laughs> get, get the fish back loose. We're like, fuck, like, this thing's just gonna die outside the water on this hook. And we're like, we, we knew we shouldn't have done this from jump. Like, this is a bad look. So I'm like, well, we're gonna have to go get Eugene. <laughs> so two, you know, 20 year old dudes there to do like a man's job. We run up to Eugene, we're like, yo, Eugene. We caught a fish, but we can't get it off the hook. So he just kind of like grunts and like, just like, Ugh. walks down to the water, just grabs a fish, grabs a hook, out, chuck, and then walked away. We're like, wow. We're huge, huge pussies. To add to the pussiness, <laughs> that same night, we're sleeping in the, in like our quarters or whatever. <laughs> and I wake up to my buddy, just losing his shit, freaking out, like screaming like a girl. He's like, I just felt something crawl across me. There's something in here, there's something in here. I'm like, yeah, no shit. We're in the middle of the wilderness in like a fucking cabin. Like clearly something's gonna be in here. So we turn the light on. We can like hear the shit scurrying around. Eventually we see that it's a mouse. I'm like, it's a mouse, man, come on. He's like, oh, it's just disgusting. He's like, I don't wanna be sleeping with that thing running all over me. I'm like, you know, fair enough. Like, I get that. But at the same time, it's like, dude, it's a mouse. Let's be realistic here. Like, come on. Are you really going to lose your shit over a mouse? And he certainly did lose his shit over a mouse. He lost. He didn't sleep that night. <laughs> he just, and he like made me stay up with him for like a bunch of hours, like trying to trap the mouse. I was like, man, we're never gonna trap it. It's it's like keeps going in these holes and shit. It lives here. We're just a guest in its house at this point. Like, just trying to go back to sleep. But he was all paranoid all night. We didn't get any sleep. And then the next day was like we were leaving. So once again, we flew off of a dirt strip out of there and the, I'm telling you the strip the takeoff the takeoff strip was like a football field <laughs> like a football field and a half I would say two football fields is a stretch maybe two football fields I even then I don't know pretty much a stretch so yeah flew back and then uh the flight back was you know similar like just rickety and whatnot but you know, nothing too bad, didn't die. Lived to tell the tale. But that was my first flight ever, it was on like a Cessna. Over the woods of Northern, North America, Northern Canada. In the wintertime. 
really not that cool really not that fun didn't think of it before it happened like when i was start, you know when it, when it was happening i was like why did i do this it's not a good look and yeah it was a hilarious little event Me and my friend are very, uh, very much wusses when it comes to the great outdoors, and I'm not afraid to say it because it is what it is. I was raised in a house. I wasn't raised in the woods. I was raised in a city, in a city in the house. Though I had a camp and I did go around, you know, the outdoors and stuff. I, you know, I'm just, I'm not. I don't reach into things mouths uh, that often, and I'm not really into start starting to try. Um, and uh, yeah, little little creatures running around all over your vermin on your body at night. Not, not chill. Not that chill. So that was delicious. Kind of like a mess. Really looks like a sort of a gangbang orgy of food kind of happened. A lot of a lot of sauce. A lot of liquids. A lot of debris such as like clothing representing clothing and uh yeah it felt nice felt real good so till the next one you have to do with it you gotta eat good you gotta live well and you gotta stay true <laughs> peace